Hello, you're listening to Hibs Talk. I'm your host as always, Gav. Joining me today is Dave. All right. Liam. Yeah. And Joe. Hello. So let's say, so we're going to chat about the Celtic game today. We're going to have a chat about some of the youth players. Obviously, Ben Sterling's left, have a chat about where the youth players are and, uh, and things like that and how the HTC has performed, I guess. We're going to have a chat about Hamilton and we're going to finish up with a game of start bench cell. But first, guys, how you doing? Fantastic, you? Yeah, good, good. Um, good day off today and, and playing a bit of COD with, with, with you guys. Liam, what's your kind of thoughts on the new map? Hey. Uh, I mean, there's no too much has I changed. New map, it's pretty much just that similar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've they've added a, a couple of wee subway bits, um, but you know, it's no not a great change. But I think it'll change when the new one comes out because I think they're mm. carrying it over. Joe, how's your day been today? I'm oh, not so bad. I had a day off, so just playing about Xbox. I need to go on call to you guys. Yes, you do. You do. Aye. Very really good, like, so if you're shit, you'll fit right in. Oh, I'm, I'm so bad. <laughs> I'm fitting with yeah. Gav, like. <laughs> <laughs> I am horrendous. I keep on uh, using um, other games terms, shall we say. So we'll have to start with the news, of course, though, that Ryan Porteous has been called up to the Scotland squad again. Liam, rewards for some fine form from Porteous this season. Absolutely. Um, he's been an absolute rock at the back, him and Paul Hanlon. Um, you know, I'm absolutely delighted to, to see him get a call up again uh, I think it's absolutely deserved and um, you know he's in he's in good company in the squad with uh, Cooper Gallagher and McKenna as well so you know hopefully he can he can get you know that international debut under his belt uh, add another couple of quid to his price tag for when he does leave Hibs um, but yeah, I think it'll be a, a great experience for him um, he'll probably learn a lot from from the, the players at Scotland so you know I'm buzzing for him uh, He spoke about how big a learning the cover was and how you know uh, impressed he was by the standards and things like that so hopefully another big learning curve for him Joe three, three games coming up do you think there's a chance he could get his first cap or is Manchester United midfielder Scott Mc, <laughs> uh, McTominay going to play ahead of him on, for some strange reason at centre back <laughs> um, I think for him to be called up it's a good sign um I think there probably is a chance for him to get his first international cap. It gives him a chance to play against other players as well, as well that he might not get to play against Blades at Hibs. Um, so it's all going to be experience, and a lot a bit more experience to this game as well. And uh, Dave, I mean, we spoke about this quite a, about a few weeks ago. Paul Hanlon, we kind of said maybe feels that he should be in contention, but just sort of, do you think it's just sort of down to age? Yeah, good. If. If Steve Clark's wanting to try and build a squad and a team that can maybe gel together, then, well, one, he needs to play the same team in that all the time. And then maybe look a few years down the line, like Hanlon's not going to be going to a tournament, I don't think, whereas Porteous has got every chance of, well, being a proper leader for Scotland, didn't he? So. Yeah. And obviously we've seen Shankland called up to the Scotland squad. I've seen a few Hibs fans saying about Nisbet. Liam, do you think it's a case of the fact that Shankland's been in the squad before? Yeah, and I think we were talking about this earlier. Um, Nisbet, uh, you know, I think it might be a, a shade early for for Nisbet. You know, he's only played a handful of games in the top flight. Shanklin's obviously been in the squad before, knows his way about. I think maybe Nisbet could be called up for friendlies going forward. Um, you know, Shanklin's obviously got the experience and is, is a big... It's a big game that we've got coming up, so you know we need uh, we need um, that kind of international experience. Although how little of it Shanklin's got, um, probably over this bit at this moment in time. Yeah, I think you know a bit unfortunate to miss it this time, but I think going forward it's definitely going to be in contention once he's proved himself a bit more for Hibs and once he gets yeah. his foot in the door. I don't think uh, he'll look back after that. So. Starting with the Celtic game, we went with the same team. No Murphy, although he was able to play. Liam, your thoughts on uh, when you seen the team line up? Uh, I wasn't too surprised. I thought Dre Wright did enough against Rangers to um, keep his place in the team. Um, I was, you know, I was, I was pretty happy with uh, the same team that played against Rangers. I thought we played pretty well. I thought we we could have had a go at Celtic. 
with that team and you know before the game anyway I was I was pretty confident um, and I was taking something away Dave sticking with the three five two was that the correct setup um, to go against Celtic at Parkhead? I think so because it's it's like we were speaking about uh, on the preview. You probably are better playing with like the five at the back. Kind of gives you that flexibility, and then you've got to, yeah, you're able to counter attack them going forward. So uh, if we played with a four, we'd probably end up just sitting too deep anyway. So I gave the three five two because there's something to break on. Liam, your your thoughts on the the first half performance? I think we, I think we did have a boat at Celtic. Uh, I would say for the majority of the first half, we were actually the better team, created the better chances. Um, you know, Doidge has a, a great chance that he that he completely fluffs. Um, Nisbet had a chance that he skies, and the only real um, threats that Celtic posed was a couple of times when they went forward. Um, you know, and one of their goals was a, a, a big defensive mistake really from, from Doig, you know, no, no really tracking his, his man back. Um, but yeah, I, I thought we played pretty well the first half uh, and I was I was quite happy at half-time. I didn't think it deserved to be 2-0 anyway. And Doig was subs at half-time. Joe, uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to speak about young players quite a bit later on, but young laddies that are getting their, their chances are going to make mistakes, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Um, I, was, I was actually quite surprised that uh, Doig played. Uh, Doig started anyway. I thought that Jack Ross being a defender he would have known that um, it's going to be a big game for him. He might get a bit excited and make mistakes. But then again, you've got Stevenson that's going to be the replacement for him. Um, sorry, Doig, Doig was a mistake, but it's an easy mistake to make. Aye, and, and uh, David, I mean, the young players that are going to make mistakes, they just have to you know, learn from them rather than just sort of let them get to them. Yeah, and that's that's why I personally think he just needs to go right back in against Hamilton, because otherwise we'll get this. I could have a situation that Mackey had a Ibrox, had a mare sent off, and then never seen him again. So definitely I had a tough. Liam, what you? I had a tough game. I think you know up against Frimpong. Frimpong's a really difficult player to play against. Uh, Frimpong's class. He's rapid. He's tricky. Uh, muggy a minute yeah. so. so the first goal obviously uh, way too much space for the, the hit but just before that the Celtic's attack comes from a Porteous clearance it's like he's trying to hit the ball like clear it with the outside of his boot or something Liam what, what is Porteous trying to do there when he's trying to clear the ball I've not got a clue and I'm not too sure how defending like that has gone in the Scotland squad like <laughs> but you know <laughs> uh, probably just a rush of blood to the head Wanting to get the ball clear, panicking, and unfortunately, it, it goes back to Celtic, and you know you kind of take anything away from McGregor because it's a sensational strike. Uh, nothing that the goalie can do either. So, you know, it's it's a poor decision for Portis, but in the end, you know, defenders make the kinds of clearances all the time, and they don't always lead to goals. But you know, Portis maybe needs to put his thinking cap on there and just put his foot right through the ball and send it into the stand. Ah, it looks like he's trying to play a clever pass and maybe try to get a bit of curve in it or something. Just, just clear it. Um, yeah. ah, you've got to realise where you are at times. Um, so, I mean, Dave, coming out of the second half, we're 2-0 down. What was your thoughts on the, the um, second half? I mean, going through .NET, a lot of criticism that we didn't look like a team that were 2-0 down and trying to get back into it. Yeah, I would, I would love to know what the game plan was at half-time. What we said to the players, like, were we going to just to try and not get beat 3 or 4? Or because it didn't look like we were going to try and get back in the match. I thought we were maybe trying to contain them to the point where we could maybe nick a goal 70th minute and then put them under a bit of pressure because Celtic have been feeling the pressure when um, when it's been on them. So maybe it was that, but it wasn't good enough. 100% not good enough. And I've seen a lot of people as well, Joe, say that there's a missing link between the midfield and the attack at the moment. I think you know, we've seen Nisbet come deep quite a lot, trying to pick up the ball, trying to create things. Is that where we're missing Scott Allen at the moment? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Um, Nisbet coming deep is uh, all well and good, but when you have Doidge in front of you, who uh, he spends a lot of stamina in the first 10 minutes, and then it's kind of, he's chasing the ball after that. He kind of needs some pace in front of Nisbet if he's coming back. 
Um, so Alan has to kind of be in that 10 role or Dre Wright to uh, give Nisbet some service. And Liam, I mean, with Scott Allen out with a you know unknown um, health reason at the moment, and Stevie Mallon on the bench, is, is this where, why is Stevie Mallon not getting to come in and play that position? I think that uh, this is the perfect opportunity for Mallon to come back in. Um, but then again, you look at that team and, and you think, you know, who does Stevie Mallon come in and replace? Because you know, you've, we've, we've had a, a couple of really good games, you know, with, with Dre Wright playing and, and Murphy had a decent game up against St Mirren. So, you know, he's not really got much of a chance of getting in this team at the moment, considering he's no, he didn't really play uh, that much at the tail end of last season when, when Jack Ross came in. And he's not, I don't think he's, has he played this season? I think he's maybe come on. Just off the bench. A few yeah. Times. Um, you know, I think it would maybe be an idea to start getting him into that that kind of the Scott Allen mould because he's a he's a brilliant player, um, but you know, I think he, he just needs to I think he needs to prove himself in in that in that role again. Yeah, definitely. I think it's more of his natural position than what he's been used at Hibs in the past. Uh, I think he was tried to kind of we well, spoke about before tried to replace McGeeck in that role, but now we're kind of see him. He's got the opportunity to be further up, and it's, it must be a bit frustrating him for him when okay he scored against Ibrox, but Dre Wright, who's a winger playing out of position in his position when the, the boy that's usually ahead of him is out with an injury. So um, we'll have to wait and see what comes for that. But <clears throat> looking at the the, the, the well, obviously a great start to the season, everyone sort of, a lot of people talking about that. But looking at the games against the big four, the bookies, who they would have down for the sort of contenders for the top four positions, uh, positions, and who finished in the top four last season. Celtic Rangers, Aberdeen and Motherwell. Celtic, we got beat 3-0. Rangers, we drew 2-2. Aberdeen, we got beat 1-0. And Motherwell, we drew 0-0. So that's two <coughs> points from a possible 12. Dave, we need to be doing better against the top four sides. Yeah, three of them were at Easter Road as well. So, and to be honest, we had uh, one good performance out of that, and that was probably the Rangers game. I was happy with that performance. So, I think the rest of them... I uh, were definitely below par, but it's, uh, we can only beat obviously everyone. Uh, beat everyone else and just up our game in that. Then we've got a big chance of finishing third this season. Joe, Joe, what's went wrong in the games against the big four? Um, it's probably problems we've seen time and time again uh, in the last games. Um, we're just not getting uh, enough attacks out there. Uh, Rangers, we ha- did have a few chances, but apart from that, Aberdeen, we missed Gogic a lot, and that uh, like that brought everything back down uh, deeper into the pitch. But um, uh, apart from that, just we just need to get more service out to the attackers. Eh? We've lost the midfield in the other matches I've seen. That hmm. that midfield battle we've lost. I thought Gogic would have won that, like won some of them for us, eh? but. No, nah, well, obviously, it was out against Aberdeen. Aye. No, Aberdeen, aye. Aberdeen. Aye. Uh, Motherwell, I just think they've got a better, better midfielders. Um, obviously, Alan Campbell, which I'm sure you'll mention, but just like kind of owned us. You've got Scott Brown, bossed us about. Then you had like Davis, Arfield. Like, get, they're good players and that at the same time, but that's probably why I still think we need to, to, to bolster that middle of the park because that's where you control games. Like you can have a solid defence, but if your midfield's not controlling games, then you're you're still going to hey, flood the attacks to defend against, and you're not going to be in control of the ball. Back in May, we we done a podcast, or might be in early June, we done a podcast about I think it was called "Will the Four Loanies Return?" Or "Will the Loanies Return?" Looking at Omionga, Doherty, Naismith, and McNulty, and we were talking about we'd come back and stuff and. Even, you know, the, the, now Docherty signed a three-year deal with Hull. Uh, Omionga made his debut for, um, who was it he signed for? Scarlow, wasn't it? Uh, so he, he's made his, debut for, uh, he said, made his debut for them in the last few weeks. Naismith looks to be involved in Peterborough's plans. And McNulty, aside from some allegations, looks, looks to be linked to a move to Dunn United on loan. So... <laughs> Um, but I mean, looking at the squad, where it was in January, to me anyway, when I looked at the squad, 
from you know January onwards, end of January onwards, I thought we were in a good place, but we still need pretty much Gogic. We've now got Gogic, so that was still something we needed. But we had a box-to-box midfielder in Doherty, and we had a deep-line playmaker in Omionga, a striker in, in uh, McNulty, and <laughs> uh, I know, Liam, you're not the biggest Omionga <laughs> fan, and a right back in Naismith. So, Dave, starting with, you know, just going through those players, do you think we've replaced them in terms of what they brought to the squad? No, I've, we've not replaced Doherty. I think I'm very happy with Paul McGinn right back, to be honest. Um, I'd rather he just stayed there than getting Naismith back. And Omeon got him no ball about at all. I think he's probably a decent player, but don't think we miss him. And I'd, I'd, I would say it's just Doherty we're, we're, we're missing out on and out of the folk you mentioned because Nisbet's better than McNulty. Yeah, I mean, McGinn was brought in after Naismith's injury, which obviously was a bad injury. So, I mean, you could argue that one was brought in. And Nisbet, probably the replacement for, for McNulty. A lot of people have said we would, we'd probably do need another striker, but it looks like that's the replacement for that. But yeah, Liam Doherty, the, that sort of box-to-box midfielder, getting us up the park, it's really somebody we're missing at the moment. Absolutely. And it's the kind of, they, that's the kind of midfielders that cost you the big money. Um you know, I think I, I would have loved uh, to get Doherty back. I uh, don't think his heart was set on coming back to Hibs. Um, but I think that's the, the first time when we had Doherty. It was the first time really since McGinn that we had a player that could kind of do that, that kind of dirty work. And, you know, he, he wasn't too bad when he when he had the ball on the edge of the box. He could he could hit it as well. So, uh, you know, I, th- I think, yeah, if we had a player like Doherty... Um, We'd we'll probably be getting on a, a lot better this season, but you know, I think maybe Joe Newell's maybe going to come into that kind of mould. Um, I think he's he's played really really well uh, since the start of the season, and I'm a big fan of Joe Newell. So hopefully we can see him kind of step into that that kind of mould. I, I, I don't think he was, you know, a central midfielder when he was at Rotherham. I think he was a winger, but um, yeah. hopefully he can he can start to add more goals to his game because his, his finish at St Mirren is absolutely tremendous I think you're right there Newell has brought in what a lot of what Omeonga would have brought to us you know especially now that he's adding goals to his game he can play that deep line playmaker role we've got Gogic but I think the two of them, them need help we've seen that yep. against Motherwell we've seen that against Celtic even at times against Rangers they've been a bit overrun I think they need somebody in there and it looks like the club are trying to do something about that. We've had three bids rejected for Kyle McGuinness and also r- rumours that we're uh, monitoring the situation with Campbell of Motherwell, Alan Campbell of Motherwell. Which I'm calling absolute bullshit on. <laughs> why, are you calling, why are you calling bullshit on Campbell? Too, too good to be true. I've got to agree with you here. Far too I good agree. To be true, I, I would have him in a heartbeat and I'm just like, it would blow my mind if we managed to get him Get him tied to a decent contract, and we'd probably only have him about a year, and we would make millions. That's what I'd tell Big Ron. Two and Ross and Ron are about in the golf course. That'd be my. I'd, that's what I'd be saying if you I was. Sales pitch. Aye, but, come on. Come get here. get a hecky back in the door Aye. for the sales pitch. <laughs> PowerPoint. <laughs> but he wasn't still on garden leave. We could have got him in. You used him for something. Um, so I, I mean, Liam, you said the same. Why, why is Campbell too unrealistic? Uh, well, if you need, you can need to think it for his point of view. Why would they? It's a bit of a sideways move for Campbell at the moment. I think. Um, I think we are we are definitely a bigger club than Motherwell. Um, we could probably pay a lot more than Motherwell, but he needs to think of his career. And at the moment, Motherwell are. A bit better than us at the moment. I would, I would say, you know, given the last few years, um, looks like it's going to change this year. Motherwell have been murder so far, apart from when they played Tibbs, obviously. Um, but I, th- I think that Alan Campbell is going to have offers elsewhere. Especially, I think he's at a contract next summer. So, you know, in January, there's going to be loads of different teams trying to go for him. Wouldn't you be surprised if the old firm were in for him? Um, an offer from down south. I, I'm not too sure we could make it work for him. I have to disagree though about, about like a sideways move. To me, it reminds me of Lewis Ferguson a few years ago. Contract coming up. Uh, I think he did, did have let his contract run down at Hamilton and moved to Aberdeen. You know, could have 
probably went down south or held out for Celtic or Rangers. And, but I think that's the sort of business we've got to be doing. You know, you see, Aberdeen have been doing it in the last few years. They've been going for players like that, that people go, it's not a bit of a sideways move. To me, Motherwell to Hibs is the same as Hamilton to Aberdeen. Mm-hmm. Um, no disrespect to Motherwell. I know the, they'll, probably, they'll probably think they're bigger than their Lanarkshire rivals, but I think that's the sort of you know, ambition we've got to have when it comes to signings. I mean, Joe, what, what's your thoughts on that? Is this the sort of, you know, have we really sort of go for, got to start signing players that we think are a bit of a coup? We've got to change that um, mentality. Yeah, the fan mentality is a big part of that, I think. Um, especially when the names come out on Twitter. Um, a lot of the rumours, uh, like Campbell and McGuinness, we kind of thought, that's a bit strange. How can we get them? Um, so, <clears throat> I think if there's a sales pitch there that Jack Ross and Ron Gordon can give the player, um, like coming to the capital, you can get a decent wage. You'll be here and then you'll go to a different club. You'll get a, di- a decent sell on. You'll get, uh, like, go down south or elsewhere. Um, I think there's a decent sales pitch there. It just has to be, like, so watertight to get past the old form. Yeah, and I think there's something really exciting happening at Hibs in the next few years. And I think it's about not just sort of, you know, that net, your step is on, but also getting them to buy into what they, they could be really a, a part of um, at Hibs in the next few years. So, Hopefully, like I say, I think they had that kind of initial sales blip with Nisbet and he was desperate to get here after that. So hopefully we can get the same done with Campbell. If you want to get like, the fans like on side and to believe that we are going to be ambitious and we are going to do stuff like we were at the AGM, Ron Gordon's going on about his plans and then going on about how he wants to be up there at the top of the league. He wants to be one, like the biggest club outside the old firm. Then start with this then. And I'll believe it. Exactly. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll believe in Ron Gordon. <laughs> Gonna get me wrong. I would love to have him at Hibs. I think he would be a sensational signing. I, but at this moment in time, you know, with the McCrory deal falling through, uh, I just I can't. Even, I just can't see it. I've just not got enough faith there. Uh, and and I, I, I tell you what I'll do. I'll make sure I retweet the Aberdeen podcast when they are reacting to the news that Kyle McGuinness and Campbell have signed for the <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah so what, I mean, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll be hopefully we'll be reacting to some transfer news over the, the next couple of weeks so um, I or obviously the international break coming up as well is it the 12th of October the international break yeah the, the transfer window shuts <laughs> Uh, as long as I, I don't know, I don't know, mate. Sometime we'll, 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 we should have done the research. I've got all these notes and I don't have that written down. Aye, but just sort of final thing on that. Then, Dave, I mean, I can know the answer. To this, do you think with McGuinness and Campbell, is it one or the other, or is it the chance to get really ambitious? And could you see us going for both? I think we'll sign McGuinness and then no Campbell. So there you go, Liam. I think it's one or the other. Um, I'd like to see us get Campbell, but I don't think McGuinness is too bad a backup option. I'd, but then at this moment in time, I don't know who's the backup option and who's the number one. Say we've had three bids not back for St Mirren, so we're obviously really after McGuinness. Jack Ross will ken him for his time there. Um, and, you know, it's it's just time will tell if we're actually even in for Campbell. It might just be bullshit that's been made up. And what I didn't want to happen is like we didn't get Campbell and then folk are like, oh, we missed it again. And then, but Hibs maybe weren't even in for Campbell and Aye. it was just paper talk. Is the agent in the situation? Yeah. Like, fucking hell, Morelos and Campbell might have the same agent, mate. <laughs> <laughs> every, club, every club wants Morelos, but it never goes anywhere, so you never know. <laughs> I'm too happy with you with your tweet as well. Let's talk about that for one second. It's done a lot better than I thought. Yeah, <laughs> aye, it's done really well. <laughs> Very creative for you. I was just, it was just putting logos on top of Mr. Bean. It was the exactly. Know, <laughs> it was good Potter, which I was a bit surprised that you came up with all yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about players that were missing in the squads. We're talking about the fact we're missing a box and box midfielder, it is understandable to argue that we should be able to promote players from the youth academy to fill a void that we're missing. But that hasn't been the case. You know, obviously, it's great to see that Josh Doig's come in. We've got a couple of young laddies like Gullen and Shanley on the bench. But we've seen a lot of young uh, players sort of 
coming to Hibs, getting to about 22, 23, and then going out on loan, or in the case of Ben Stalling this week, going out permanently. Now, I just wanted to have a chat about, you know, HTC and how successful it's kind of been in terms of youth players and things like that. I mean, 13 years now, I mean, I think it was it was sort of built from the money when we sold Varden, O'Connor, Brown. I think a lot of those players even sort of donated some of their, sell on, uh, their sign-on fees to help sort of fund it and things like that. And there was hope that there would be a, a golden generation, of, another golden generation off the back of it. Dave, have we seen any signs of another golden generation? No, the answer to that. No, we haven't. <laughs> as easy as that. So I was hoping you expand on that a bit more, but that's fine, no worries. <laughs> Just come back to me if you need anything else. <laughs> <laughs> so... <clears throat> but yeah, I think it's very, I mean, all, over that sort of the last few years, we've seen Porches come through before that, Hanlon and Stevenson. But I mean, it's like, and obviously Doig now, but it's really strong to see a lot of players coming through from which we kind of expected. I think there's been a lot of players that have came through and we've kind of got our hopes on. You know, Ollie Shaw comes to mind. Um, players like Callum Crane, I thought, well, here's Louis left back sorted. But, you know, so I mean, Joe. Could we have done some more for some of these players, that, you know, in terms of their game time and, and sort of development? Could we have done more for like Oli Shaw? I think there is. I think you can only give a player so much game time before you have to make a judgment on him. And I don't think Oli Shaw had it for uh, for us at Hibs. Maybe at Ross County, he's got the uh, got the talent, but for a starting Hibs striker, he's not. It wasn't the best for us. Liam, do we need to give managers more of a sort of maybe, I don't know, mandates to kind of work the right correct word to kind of say we need you to play more youth players and maybe give more managers more time to kind of bleed more youngsters in and give them game time so that, so I mean, I mean, we're saying about Fraser Murray and, you know, he's going to Dunfermline because he needs game time. Why can't he get that game time at Hibs? Uh, I think because he's not good enough. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's always a good idea, I think, you know, we'll, we'll have all these good players coming through from our youth system. But for me, anyway, in, in my opinion, you look at, like, your Fraser Murrays, um, Sterling, Crane, Shaw, uh, and all that. I honestly didn't think that they're up to the standard at, that we need at this club. Um, you know, of note, or like of recent, recent uh, times, you know, Cummins... Doig is, you know, about the only ones that you can think of that's come through. Mackie, maybe, um, that's come through and has, has been, you know, good enough to, to be at Hibs. Um, I don't know what it is. I think sometimes you get shit players through your system. Sometimes you get good players. Um, you know, look at when we brought through Ryden O'Connor, Brown and all that. Um but, you know, for the amount of good players that you need to get, you need to bring some, through some players who aren't so good, who will probably go on and have great careers at other clubs, like Scott Martin. Do you think that Jink players are too comfy? That like Jink, they've maybe got it too good at HTC? Aye. That, like, what motivation is Ennis or uh, Murray or that? What, have they, what motivation have they got to leave Hibs? Because they've got it, they're like, they're fine. They're now. There's no, like, drive, no? Ah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, I think, uh, obviously, I think football's changed a lot since when, you know, your Ryden's O'Connors and all that came through. Uh, you know, they were, I don't, I, I don't know, they were badly, but I think they were, it was mere rough for them and it was, it was more an incentive to get into the first team and, and all that. And I think the youth players now are a bit soft. I, I, I think I gauge it off uh, like Ken like Cy Ferry and all his interviews and that and he talks to the players who came through back then and in more recent times and uh, you can tell the difference as to as to like the upbringing of these players so I think maybe that's got something to do with it we I mean I know I just I take Ollie Shaw as an example um, just to take it uh, I know there's lots of players we could do with this but I mean I think I him that he had Stokes and Murray uh, ahead of him. The two of them got put out and then they brought in another two strikers and again he was still third in the pecking order. Is there maybe opportunities like that where we've been sort of focused on a league position and things like that where we could have maybe given Ollie Shaw, right, you're our number one striker for the next six months, Dave, and, and sort of give him, would, would that have helped his development or was, or was he never going to make it at Hibs? 
Yeah, to be honest with you, and this will sound harsh, but if we had just made all the shot our number one striker, we would have finished a couple of places further down in the league. Mm. I don't think he's good enough. It, like, what, but is there, have we got to do that in order to help the development of youngsters? Put the, their development ahead of league positions? No, nah, no, no, no to that extent, I don't think, no. Uh, do you think it's just a case that we've accepted mediocrity? I mean, it has been quite a mediocre time to be a Hibs fan the last 20 odd years. Do you think we've just had too much mediocrity and we need to be signing players that are close to already made or that are going to be, you know, your McGinn's, your Campbell's, your Nisbet's? I just, I just think they've all had enough time to impress and to show that they're going to be good enough. The hundred percent have had enough time. Like Doig's done it straight away. Portis has done it straight away. Mackey's done it to an extent at the start that he's good enough to stick around. All the shot, I never really felt that was there. He was maybe the closest. He was like kind of on the edge. Fraser Murray, I've not seen that at all. Uh, Ennis Murray, like is he? Ben Sterling, twenty-two year old, no made an appearance. I'm telling Ben Sterling that he's going to be get our number five jersey and sit in front of that defence. And be like, right, you're number five. Isn't it going to make him a world beater? It's not going to turn him and make the difference between him never playing in a first game to becoming shit hot. Like, I mean, he's just been shipped out of Hamilton. He's not made one senior appearance for Hibs. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I think maybe if we see some of these players in League Cup matches, and I mean, I, I think about Josh Campbell and stuff, I, I think, oh, there's a really ex- ex- exciting player. One that I was kind of hoping would be sticking around after seeing him in the League Cup last year. He went out on loan. I was like, okay, you're year loan, fair enough, and then he'll be involved next year. We're now crying out for midfielders this season, away on loan to Edinburgh City. I'm sure it'll be a really beneficial loan for him, but at the same time, we're crying out for midfielders. If he's good enough, you know, surely, or if, I don't know, maybe we should, I would have liked to have seen somebody like that stick around, but maybe I'm sort of putting too much expe- high expectations on them. But at the same time, we need to be, because we want them to be progressing in the first team, and we're going to end up with more Fraser Murray's Ollie Shaw's and things like that. And I feel sorry for these guys that were kind of referring them in, in, to, in that way. Um, but I mean... Oh, so a couple this... examples he thought being good enough for was Stoig getting a game over Stevenson. Porteous keeping out uh, Adam Jackson, for example, who was a signing that we spent money on and then we then had to sell. Like McGregor, I know he's been had a lot of injuries in that for the team. I mean, he's keeping he was people. He's keeping Hamlin at the team for a bit because it was him yeah, important. Exactly. Uh, there's an example of two people that have came through for the youth recently who've earned their place, and that's the difference between quality and having average youth players. So, is this maybe rather than sort of pointing fingers at HTC, Joe, maybe more of an issue for Scottish football in general that they're not producing the talented youngsters that we're kind of expecting that are going to be good enough to break in straight into the first team? Um. Looking at it from a Hibs perspective, I think that it's telling that um, you talked about we lacked midfielders, but we sold Tommy Block, um, or he left on a free, I can't remember. Uh, we loaned Fraser Murray, we loaned Josh Campbell. There's three midfielders that could be promoted, um, and they've gone. So I think even if Scottish football did have a better uh, like youth system uh, I don't think it would matter because we keep bringing in these players and they keep going on loan or they go for free in the youth development system and I mean this sort of whole conversation was kind of brought on by obviously Murray got it on loan but um, Ben Sterling going out on a permanent move the one that I think a few of us sort of had high hopes for and then now he's sort of saying I hope Ben Sterling I really do I hope he goes Hamilton does really well and proves us wrong and has us saying why did we not keep him? We've made a mistake with him. Um, so I do wish him the best at Hamilton. And funnily enough, Hamilton are who we're playing on Friday night. So let's have, have a wee chat about Hamilton and preview that game. How's that for a segue? Oh, smooth. Um, so <laughs> it's very smooth. So Hamilton find themselves 10th in the league after the eight games. The last five games, they have had a 1-1 draw with Dundee United in the last game. They beat Kilmarnock 2-1 away, lost 2-1 to Livingston, lost 2-0 to Rangers and beat Motherwell in the Lanix for Derby 1-0 at Motherwell. So seven points from the last five games. Uh, ben Sterling and Callahan seem to be their big signings, but it's the defender, Odifun. Odifun? Is that how you pronounce it? I'm loan from oh, Livingston. Odifun, yes. Aye, um, Odifun, that's it. I've got my living mate's going to be kicking me for uh, butchering that. Uh, he's a defender, but he scored three goals for them, so seems to be a bit of a danger man for them this season. Um, Dave, I mean... 
what was your kind of thoughts been on Hamilton in the last couple of years when we've came, came up against them? They, they do have a tendency to occasionally be a bit of a bogey, a bogey team or a side we put away quite comfortably. Uh, yeah, I, I genuinely think they actually try and play some decent football sometimes. That game they pumped us at Easter Road is one of the best goals I've seen at an opposition team score. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one they passed through the whole team. And I don't think they're any different. I think Scott Martin has spoke about that. He's like, everybody's just got in their head that Hamilton are like this perception that they're an ugly team and they're not. So, but I think they're, they're difficult to break down, but I think they're genuinely, they're all right. They're, they're, everybody expects them to go down every year and they didn't. They're like the shite in the bottom of your shoe that you want it, you kind of get off. Liam, what's your thoughts that have been on, on Hamilton and what, what kind of game are you expecting on Friday night? I think you always need to expect a, a, a dog fight when you play Hamilton. They're one of the teams that digs their heels in. And I think at times they're difficult to beat. Um, you know, it sounds stupid, you know, the t- times that we beat them, what was it, 6 0 or something, we beat them uh, a couple of seasons ago. And, you know, we have pumped them a couple of times in the last couple of years, but I don't think you can never really take them for granted. I think they're, especially under Brian Rice, I think they're now trying to play a bit better football. Um, you know, I think, we, especially with Gogic, when they had him last season, they were they were really winning a lot of their midfield battles. Um, I'm not too sure what they've done to replace them. Uh, I've not really kept many tabs on Hamilton, but, you know, I'm, I'm expecting Hibs to win, but I'm expecting it to be a tough game. And I mean, we spoke earlier on, Joe, about the the performances and the, the results against the non-top four sides. Are you quite confident of us getting back to winning ways against Hamilton on Friday night? Um, I think Jack Ross should be expecting it, to be honest. Um, if we are challenging for top four, we need to be, be beating these teams and no just taking a point or being happy with a draw. Um, which they talk about Hamilton digging in, but I think Gogic is going to... Uh, take a lot of that out of the, out of the team interceptions and uh, with Porteous leading or uh, being second for interceptions in the league it's going to be quite an interesting game I did I think you know a real opportunity to get back to winning ways after a disappointing uh, game on, on Sunday so Dave what's, that, what's your score prediction for the game uh, 3-0 Hibs I think we'll win Liam eh uh, I think 3-0 or 3-1. I'll go with 3-1. And Joe, what's, what's your score prediction? Nisbet Hattrick, 3-0. Love it. Oh, oh we're all scoring three goals. <laughs> yeah, what do you think, Gav? 1-0 Hibs. <laughs> Last minute. Just, just, to be, just to be different. Just to be different. I think, no, I think I was doing a prediction today and I think I went 2-0 Hibs. So I got a, com- a comfortable... Um, two 0 I went to my predictor. I was I've been doing so. Yeah, I'll stick with that. Two 0 Hibs. Good boy. Good boy. So we're going to finish up today with a game of start bench sell. Ooh. So today, I mean, in the last we've done uh, we've done what three or four now, and we've sort of done a few which have been really good players, and uh, we've done one which have been not so good players when we're looking at the goalkeeper. So I thought we'd go back to that this week with the right back edition. So. Three players that I'm going to get you to choose from. Thierry Gattusi, Tim Clancy, and Alan Mabry. <laughs> you've got a start one, you've got a bench one, and you've got a sell one. A sell one might, might not be that e- an easier task. <laughs> so, <laughs> Dave, what, what's your memories of Thierry Gattusi? <laughs> I don't really have many uh, <laughs> memories, to, um, to be fair. Which probably says a lot. Scored against Celtic. He did, yeah. He was a banger as well. Yeah, a brilliant goal. Statman Liam here. <laughs> uh, I can't. I can't remember much of him to be fair. So, but I, I remember him not being very good. I can't. I can't remember good stuff that he did. So. Um, he was one. I believe. I, uh, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he was one of um, John Collins' signings. Like obviously, John Collins was the manager, but I believe he. I believe he was the one. One of the ones that uh, John Collins had identified as somebody he'd like to bring in. Um, and yeah, and he went actually made, went on to make 38 appearances for Hibs, which is a lot more than I thought. Um, aye. 
Uh, and, and I mean, right back had been a, a problem uh, position for a while. I mean, obviously, Terry Gattusi is probably an example of that. <laughs> uh, we kind of started to think we might have our problem solved, Liam, when we signed Tim Clancy, a, a decent record um, at, at Kilmarnock and Motherwell. Were you, did you have high hopes for Tim Clancy at all? Tell you what, at the time, I thought it was a decent signing. And I think for the most part, it was pretty solid. Um, but I think the rest of the team that we had around them was utter garbage. So, you know, a lot of injuries as well. I mean, only 19 uh, appearances in the two years he was there. A shame for you know the world beater Tim Clancy, but you know <laughs> these things, these kind of things happen in, in footballers' careers. I'm sure he would have went on to play for you know Man United, Liverpool, and all that. But it's a shame for the laddie. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and Joe Alan Mabry, the the Hearts legend himself, um, who helped to get Hibs relegated. Aye, there's no much else you can really say about him, is there? Would <laughs> <laughs> be a coach on that day? I'm not sure. I can, I can look that up just now whilst these are talking about him. Uh, I, coaching, I, I took up coaching roles at Hibs and Falkirk. Uh, he's appointed coaching position at St Johnston in June 2018, so apparently still at St Johnston. Interesting. Uh, no, I remember him uh, going into coaching at Hibs and I think he said uh, I had him on Twitter. Eh? I don't think it was very exciting on Twitter, that's why I probably unfollowed him. Uh, <laughs> not, not that I'm like the fucking BN, I didn't even use mine, but. Uh, uh, but I don't know where I was going with that one, but move on. Uh, 112 games for Hearts and 41 games for Hibs. Yeah. Right. And I'd right. say I played, played, played in that team that, 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 I mean, that six months was some of the worst football I think I've ever seen, some of the, the under Butcher and, like I say, the, the decline of the team. Uh, as soon as as soon as McPate got injured, that defence was... I mean, him, Nelson, McGivern, just oh, such a bad defence. Don't get me started on Ryan McGivern, eh? I hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Note to self, make sure Ryan McGivern is on the, the next start bench self <laughs> when Liam's on the pod. <laughs> uh, so, Dave, what's your initial thoughts? Who are you thinking of uh, starting in, the, in this? Out of these uh, three? I'm starting Alan Mabry. Wow. Going for the Hearts legend. So, what, what's your thoughts behind that? Hearts legend. I know. With I, I'm exaggerating. Yeah, just a tad. Um, but my thought process behind it is that he kind of stuck around after he finished playing. He was a that became a coach in that. Um, I. That's my thought process because he's not very good, obviously, but he's better than Clancy and Gattusi, so. I'm starting maybe. I'm benching Clancy and I'm selling Gattusi. Liam, what was your thoughts? Uh, well, uh, I think I'm going to go the complete opposite order for Dave. Uh, I'm going to start uh, Big Terry Gattusi simply for that uh, that great goal that he's scoring in Celtic. I'm sure we won that game as well. I think that was the game where, um, where Dean Shields scored the winner, where uh, Zamama took the shot and Boric saved it and parried it right out to Shields. I th- I'm sure that was that game. Uh, so, for that and that alone, Thierry Gattuzzi starting. Uh, I'm going to bench Tim Clancy because I thought he was all right. Um, and I will be selling Alan Mabry because he's a harsh bastard. Love it. Aye. I think Clancy, like say, one of those ones, just uh, one of these ones that sort of made this list from being a bit unfortunate uh, injury. Um but aye, we never saw the best of them. And Joe, Joe, what's your, your thoughts on the three? Um, I don't have many, to be honest. I think I'll probably start Gattusi, bench Clancy and sell Mabry because they play for Hearts. So yeah, I, maybe... I almost deliberately started Ma- uh, Mabry because I knew that you would just go down the Hearts route. So I've took my glasses off <laughs> and went... went I was being honest. These two are pandering to the fucking... Oh, uh, look at you, Dave, taking his Hibs glasses off on Hibs Talk, Hibs Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and I may have been a bit hyper- hyperbole with a legend thing, but he was vice-captain um, at Leicester, at, at the Hearts, and Craig Levine, I've got an eye for a player, took him to Leicester when he went to Leicester. Played for Leeds Aye, as well, eh? In the Champions League. Aye. Exactly. What a player. And I bet you, he's still got, in fact, I know he does. I know he's, he's still got his uh, Alan Mabry AM 
jumper for when he was coaching and that, and he's this and that. He wears a walk he's dug. I passed him. He's always wearing his hip stuff, never wearing his hair stuff ever. So there you go. That's added to my argument, right? He walks his dog and stuff. <laughs> I feel like you've made the arc to back you up your point. I have absolutely nothing else to say in the matter. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, I understand why you kind of want to take your Hibs glasses off with the heart stuff and stuff, but at the same time, he did play in that Hibs team that was relegated, and I, I think you can't have him starting for that. <laughs> Any, anybody for that defence. Um, apart from McPake, and, and maybe sort of, if he was if he makes it on one of these lists, I think he was a bit unfortunate to be sitting in the stand when we needed them. But we could, we could chat about that for ages. Fuck Terry Butcher is the point I'm making. Um, so yeah, what's, uh, we'll finish up with that. So we'll, like, we'll put out the, the graphic on social media to get your guys' thoughts on who you'd start bench and sell right back condition. Um, what's, uh, what's your guys' plans for the rest of the night? Uh, watch the football. It's, I didn't even know it's Tottenham Chelsea. Tottenham Chelsea the night, I think. I'm uh, uh, playing right now, so go and catch the second half of that, mate. Liam, what's your plans? Hey, nothing much, mate. Just chilling, I think. Um, not much can do now, eh? Apart from watch the telly. I would be watching the football, but my dad cancelled the sky, so... <laughs> he he cancelled the sky at the start of lockdown, but like, oh, there's not going to be any not gonna be any football on. And I was like, oh, fair, fair enough. And then the football started coming back on again. I was like, we're getting the sky back. And he went, I'll phone them. And if he came off the phone, he went, oh, it's too fucking expensive, eh? <laughs> I was like, Wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So uh, I'll maybe get a dodgy stream yet. <laughs> Joe, Joe you, what's your plans for tonight? Uh, I'll be watching the football on Sky because I've no cancelled mine. <laughs> 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 <You're not better laughs> now. I, I'm trying to decide whether to watch the second half of the football or go back and play more Warzone. I'm trying to decide between the two. Um, I think you should go and watch a football, Gav. Ah, I've seen that. I'll be editing the <laughs> podcast. The, the time I, the time I edit and upload the podcast, the football finished. So I. I so I will we'll finish up there, folks. Um, what we'll, who, who have we got after Hamilton? I haven't even done my, my, Who have we got after Hamilton? We've got Broader Rangers at home on the 7th of so October. It's league, league, league Cup action next. Anybody with Rangers we hammer. <laughs> Simple as that. We do not relent. If Broader Rangers were to come to us, pump them. Watch us get a beat off of Broader Rangers. Nah. Well, they've got Rangers in the name, so. Oh, we've got some absolute diddy games coming up. Hamilton, Broader Rangers, Cove Rangers, Forfa, Ross County. Oh, come on, man. Nice. And come then, on. then come on it, then Hearts. Loads of diddy clubs. Loads of diddy clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of uh, opportunities for Alan Campbell to get his first goal for Hibs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see if it happens, then I will be very happy. <laughs> Aye, so I'm sure there'll be uh, we've got obviously a lot of League Cup action to talk about in the next few weeks um, and so hopefully we'll, um, hopefully some more transfer discussions to be had with talking about some exciting signings and what they're going to bring to the team and how they're going to fix everything so yeah um, follow us at HFC Talk enjoy your night guys I'll let you go and enjoy the football enjoy the game on Friday and we'll be back next week cheers, cheers folks cheers bye bye